Yes. You gonna give me your shoes, ice maker? Hope not. Fine. Nice. Wonderful beer. Longboard. Kona Brewing Company. Fantastic beer. I do the proper marketing thing. Look at that, I can drink it while showing off the label. Welcome back to Rolling Review, where we talk about all things nerdy and awesome, and welcome back to another Drinks with the DM. As you may have noticed, wonderful trains here in front of me. Normally I take these off the bar. Today, I'm not doing it, because we're talking about railroading. <sighs> so, if you're new to D&D, or just new to the lingo of D&D, railroading is when your DM puts you on a track and sends you down and you really can't get off that track and your DM will do whatever they can to keep you on that track, even if it's to the detriment of the game. Now that's the like negative connotation of D&D, &D, uh, which I have a story of. Uh, but railroading is something all DMs will do eventually, whether it's really bad railroading where the players clearly don't want to do something or clearly don't want to go down a certain way and the dm just says no you're going down this this path because that's the path i've chosen for you or it could be when your dm nudges you down that path maybe gives you a second to rethink uh your plan and kind of goes uh are you really sure you want to do that? Which if your DM is asking you if you're really sure, don't do it. It's going to murder you. Alex. So at some point, everyone railroads at least a little bit. And I know that some people will say that they're just totally opposed to railroading in general, and it's all bad, and it's okay to disagree. I. Uh, I would love to hear those disagreements um, and hear what other DMs do. But let me tell you the two, my two stories for railroading. All right, so one of these <laughs> literally just happened, which is why I'm drinking and why I make these videos, because my party infuriates me. So in a little bit of railroading, my party going to a Dwarven city to get basically recruit artisans to help rebuild the city they're in because it was destroyed by a dragon and the dragon made a layer and it all turned to swamp and the walls are crumbling and falling into this, what was a swamp for like an entire year. No one kept up shit. It all went to shit. They reclaimed the city, they killed the dragon and, and now people are starting to come back and the city needs to be rebuilt. So Going to the dwarves. I just realized both my stories involves going to the dwarves. Wow, so apparently dwarves. If you run into dwarves, you're being railroaded. <laughs> Kidding. But they ran into Dugars who had besieged the, the city. Uh, and they were going, trying to get into the entrance because uh, this dwarven city is underground. And they were trying to get to that entrance, in a, that's through a cave. And they were already attacked by Dugars, took some good damage, and there were a like a bunch of Dugars sitting there. And they were loading up a wagon and sending, uh, sending it. It was full of loot um, that they had plundered from the Dwarven city. And they, I <laughs> suggested they could wait for that group to go on their way and then have a much easier time entering. But they said, screw it and went head first into the battle. And they ended up getting the attention of what well, it was. I don't, I don't know if I said it, an exact number. It was like 75 Dugar. Uh, and even though they're pretty decent, I think they just hit level 12. So I think they were level 10 at the time or level 11 at the time. But I roll really well. They're kind of buffed up because they do stupid damage. And so they were going to die if they fought. For sure. I can guarantee that as their DM, they were going to die. 
as they decided to retreat, someone, <clears throat> Alex, uh, remembered the history check, remembered what the Dugar were. That they're evil and all that stuff. They're plundering and all. And he just turns around and he's like, screw it, let's fight them. Uh, hold on. Are you sure? Like, I don't know if you want to do that. He's like, yeah, they're they're evil. Let's just let's turn and fight. I'm like, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get a beer, and you guys can think this one over. Come up with a plan. Maybe there's a better option out there. And so I, I literally I left, got beer, came back, and they started coming up with a better plan. And that's some of that soft railroading. Uh, the plan worked, too, just for the record. But that's that's the soft side of railroading. Uh, are you sure? Maybe you don't want to do this. Try to think of something else. It's probably going to be a better idea. And in that, yes, I saved their lives. And I know some DMs are brutal and have no problems killing their party in such a way. But I didn't want them to die here. Uh, if they die later, great. I'm happy about that. I try to kill them in the big battles, but in like this battle for basically nothing, they would just die. <laughs> no, like it's it's not even like a good story point to die on. So, so that's that's the story of like the software already. Give them an opportunity. You nudge them along the path. Um, and yeah, kind of making them follow what you want to do and going down the path you want, but sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's going to improve their experience. Now, the second story of bad railroading is one I was a player in. <laughs> uh, so it was me, another guy, Alex. Actually, since we don't delete any <laughs> any videos, even though there are plenty I would like to delete, if you look at the first two D&D videos we made on this channel that don't involve me, uh, way back a few years ago, the guy on there, Alex Bielish, he was another party member uh, at in our party. And it was me and him. Like, we... We're given this task to, like, go to the Dwarven City, find the king, because he was supposed to be here for, like, a conference or something, and he hasn't shown up. Like, go find out what happened to him. Okay, so we're on our way. Then shit goes crazy with bird people attacking us, and and the rest of the party shows up. One of the person helps us out. Still haven't had introductions. Then, like, an Azamar shows up and starts fighting with us, which is an another party member, and then hellhounds show up, and, like, me and Alex, our characters were like, hellhounds? This? We're out. <laughs> we just want to, we want to go. We know it was a little dickish, but it was already getting to the ridiculous point, and we're super low level, like, level threes. So we're super low level. I'm basically out of spells. Uh, I was a wizard at the time lost a bunch of hit points, and I'm like, I need to not die, <laughs> obviously. I'm squishy. And so we try leaving, and the DM's just like, oh, your, ho your horse is so scared it won't move. Okay, pretty sure ho horses have a tendency to run when they get scared, not like deer in the headlights, but I get it. Animals all act the same. Whatever. Uh, and so we just <laughs> had to sit there and wait, because we're like, we're not engaging in this battle. Those hellhounds not paying attention to us. I don't need that heat on me because I'll die. So, so we wait there. I say I'm going to take a short rest. Told it'll, it'll take 10 minutes and, you know, we're in the middle of battle. I can't really do that. I said, okay, I'm going to go lay down in the back of the cart, which he allowed me to do because he couldn't really stop me. And we let them fight their shit out. Get in the cart. We're already, like, feeling a little iffy about this because I'm like, okay, that was weird. We go to the entrance to the Dwarven city. We get in there. No one's around. One of us falls. 
I believe it was me. I fall off this like bridge, like just this natural looking bridge down in like the darkness. I just happened to get caught by like a feather fall or something like I don't know. It was weird. He he, but he showed me or he told me I saw at least a hundred dugars and a couple drow coordinating. Okay, that seems like way too much for a level three party to take on. Yep. So they pull me back up. I get out of there. We find. We find one of the drow who's now been walking around again. Don't have a lot of spell slots left. We're we're hurt. I told the party there are a hundred Dugar here. Like, this is crazy. We can't fight this alone. And so me and Alex are like, okay, let's let us go. We're not leaving this. We're not going to abandon this mission. We found out what happened. Dugar and Drow invaded. And the king is their prisoner. Let's just get out of here. Go back to the city. Tell them what's going on. Get a group, like a small army or some sort of force to come back with us. Because we're too low level to handle this. And let's go. And we get back to the entrance. There's a boulder in the way. A giant boulder. Like, why are you doing this? We, we specifically say, like, we're not abandoning this. We want to leave, get a force, because what was described to us was far more than what a level three party can handle. Plain and simple. Like, it, if I describe that to my party now, and I put them back at level three, I expect them to leave, because there's no way they're fighting that. It's too many people. They're too weak. They have too few hit points. Like that is that is a sign of the DM going get the fuck out of here. <clears throat> and we find a way to destroy the boulder. And magically there's another boulder in the way. And then he just starts making our characters do stupid things as we're trying to like get our way out. And so we're forced back in to like keep fighting and nearly die. And and then oh the boulders are magically missing like it was really bad railroading because the DM not only was like trying to force us down a path but but also the way he wanted it to happen in such a blatant and annoying way that just got rid of our create our ability to find a solution to the problem. Yes, we wanted to leave the area so that we could come back with a stronger force only because you described a situation that our characters couldn't solve on their own. We were too weak of a party. We didn't have the hit points, the spells, anything. Like, we were not prepared for that. So, yeah, of course we would go look for help. That's what you do. That's... That is literally the like, pr premise of s storytelling in like every action movie. Like you kind of get your ass beat a little bit. You realize things are like too crazy. You go get help. You come back stronger than ever, and you take out the bad guys. It'd be like Luke Skywalker never going to find Yoda, and then trying to you know fight the Emperor and Vader in the last movie, alone, with no training. On the Death Star, like, it wouldn't make sense for that. It didn't make sense in this story, and that's why that level of railroading is just shit. And it, it ruins the story for your players. It makes the experience really not all that fun at all. Um, and I'm against that shit. But like I said before, there are good versions of, of railroading. As, as long as it's there to help your players enjoy the story more as opposed to making the story or making the game miserable because you want things done your way. So it's finding that balance, finding that, that beautiful spot where they're going along with your story, they're working with you, but they still feel the ability, like they have the ability 
to find creative and out-of-the-box solutions, even if it means essentially retreating for the moment. So, yeah, uh, that's... So, yeah, that's uh, you know, the wonders of railroading. And uh, cheers. attacked by Dugars, which, depending on who edits this video, may be news to that person, because they are, both of the people who edit these videos are in the party, and I think only one of them knows the name of the thing that they fought, or the things that they were, were slash are fighting, so, hey Peter and Alex, you're fighting Dugars. <laughs> uh, anyway...